defines the 21st century city and what are the key challenges that it faces? But I think there are three really interesting things happening in almost all the big cities. One is they're trying to work out how to become low carbon, zero waste places and thinking much more holistically about what that means for everything from energy to traffic lights to buildings and so on. A completely different kind of challenge to any they've had before. The second is they're all trying to work out how to be economically competitive, how to have uh, high knowledge, high creative industries, and that too requires quite different models of development from when they were based on uh, manufacturing or, or traditional trading. And again, it requires them to interconnect lots of institutions to cultivate a, a culture of creativity. And then the third is about governance. How do you actually govern big, complicated uh, cities and connect the people in the public sector, in democracy and politics, to civil society and business? And that too requires, I think, new models of organization. And you see that happening in every, all the big cities around the world, these three trends, which are all essentially about making cities more connected, more adaptable, more, more creative, uh, but uh, where the institutions of the 20th century no longer quite work. Looking at Stockholm and seeing how many people actually who wants to move into the city, we can see that the region is actually growing quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. So of course we have the issues with more housing, more traffic and all that and we have to do that in an environmental friendly way. So what sort of things can you do using technology that would, would help you overcome this challenge? Technology has changed the way we're living up to today so of course that's going to continue just for instance one practical thing that together with a quick and fast broadband, you can work from home, you don't have to go into the office, and maybe we can also reduce other ty types of travels or trips that people take. Many of the Nordic countries went through some pretty tough challenges in the 80s and 90s, quite severe crises, recessions and so on. I think what's interesting in Finland and uh, Sweden and Denmark, Iceland, Norway, is how they responded by becoming more radical, by, by overhauling their, their welfare systems, their ecological systems, and, uh, and proving very adaptable. So if you look at the, you know, which places in the world seem most at home in the 21st century, I think many of the North European countries uh, do appear at home and have tried to build adaptability into their DNA. You see it also in East Asia, but I think some of the bigger countries are being left behind, turning out to be uh, more stuck in terms of their systems, their institutions, their interests. And I think we're now in an era where the big countries like uh, the UK or the USA or China or Germany need to learn a bit of that agility from places like Sweden. We've started rather early with actually uh building out the broadband infrastructure in Stockholm and we did that through, did that through a city-owned company but it's an open network open to all actors on the market uh, and this of course we're going to continue with so that most of the inhabitants will have the access to a quick broadband service. In terms of the knowledge economy uh, how important do you think it is to have underlying IT infrastructure as an enabler? I think that is part of the basic infrastructure that businesses and investors and all sorts of other people and inhabitants will look upon when they choose where they want to stay, where they want to live, where they want to work and where they want to develop their businesses. So I think that is one of the biggest issues that the city has to do and work with. Um, if you had to select a few examples of where you think the city is really leading, what would they be? I think that after we have done our big investment in, for instance, the e-services in Stockholm that we're now working with to develop, I hope that is going to be a good example how to actually make ac information accessible for people in a 24 hours a day service. Uh, and also, of course, we have Shista, which is our IT cluster where a lot of companies uh, drive their business from. And also, uh, we have this innovative climate that I think that quite a lot of businesses appreciate in Stockholm.